Hey, what's going on, everybody? Steve here, Rake and Profit over at rakeandprofit.com. And I am here with my friend, William, who literally started his wholesale journey in September of 2021. And he had his first sales and payout of $183. And in about five months, he's already gotten his sales up to $24,000. And uh, he did go through the wholesale formula. He has been studying, he's been researching, he's been hitting the ground running. And today we're going to share his journey of why he started wholesale. We're going to talk about what is wholesale? If you're wondering, what is wholesale? I'm, I'm just used to going to thrift stores. We're going to talk about what is wholesale, why he believes in this business model. He was saying behind the scenes how he feels that the people who are doing wholesale now are really ahead of the game. And we're going to discuss that and just dive into his story. Uh, you know, I'm excited for this one. William, how you feeling? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Steve. I am so jacked up to be a part of this uh, community, part of the you know, if there's anything I can do to provide some value of anyone that's either contemplating wholesale or just needs that extra bit of motivation, you know, if you walk, if you don't walk away from this meeting, I, I don't know what you're going to do with your life. So I, it's just an honor and a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Hey, I appreciate you, man. Without going into too much personal information, you know, yeah. William was in corporate America, was working yeah. for, you know, a big, big company. And what happened? Why did you leave that all behind and, and start wholesale? What, what's your story? Because, I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are either in the corporate, working full-time yeah. jobs, even a lot of stay-at-home moms who would love to, you know, build a business online. But they're like, I don't know. I want that steady paycheck. You know, does this really work? You know, Steve is interesting and I don't mind going deep, but uh, the, the story is this, is that corporate America or all of our lives changed when old Uncle COVID came in and and uh, wants to stay, right? He's like that the ornery uncle that just doesn't want to go away. So I was a sales director for a, uh, a multi-billion dollar company and worked in surgery for a living, selling surgical devices. And, you know, with a very short notice, a two week notice, they're saying, well, hey, you're, we're going to disband the entire group because, it, you know, access into the hospitals is very difficult and knowingly and, and and it should be right. It's all about safety and protecting uh, not only yourself, but patients. But sometimes just getting that writing on the wall that, hey, you're going to get another pink slip in your life. you got to adapt and overcome and get through what I say, what I say, getting through the going through times, like work your way out of the fog because I had to for a number of months. Right. And just from fast forward from then early 2021 to now glad I made the decision and uh, I see nothing. The light at the end of the tunnel is not an oncoming train. To me, it's that those dreams that I'm aspiring to achieve and to prove that you can absolutely um, enlighten and reestablish yourself in life in a very short order. Awesome, man. So, so how did you discover the wholesale formula in, excuse me, wholesale, the wholesale formula. Right. How do you discover the whole business model? Um, because there's so many ways out there. I mean, I'm on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram all the time. Yeah. And I mean, you are just bombarded with this opportunity, that opportunity, make money online, people selling courses and opportunity. You just don't know what to believe. So, yeah. you know, you're a smart guy. What what made you go with wholesale and, and why? And, and even, you know, go a step further to find what it is. It was interesting, uh, you know, a lot of people, when you find yourself unemployed, you're pretty much open to anything, right? And I, I was very, yeah, you got to be open. You got to say adapt and overcome. So I was online researching for jobs, either speaking with a uh, uh, recruiters per se, either doing a job. I was also doing research on, hey, when am I going to get another opportunity in my life at 46 years old to own a business, either buy a business create one of my own. Or of course, there's a price tag on everyone's head. Like, Hey, if corporate America comes calling again, I, I'm willing to go. So I was willing to just take whatever it was. And what's quite interesting was I was on the internet. I was on YouTube. And quite honestly, I was watching a couple of videos about, you know, being a nomad or digital marketing. And <laughs> I was asking my, 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 my questions like, what is it I'm good about? What is it I'm passionate about? What is that? I, I'm curious about. And what I was found myself being more and more curious about was what if I could start a business, learn a business model, this e-commerce thing, right? Because even back in the day, working in corporate America, they would hang you out to dry if you were active on social media, right? So I was like, I have to learn this social media thing. So I was on this YouTube, this thing called Instagram, Facebook. I mean, 
literally I was checked out and then checking in for the first time here in middle age. And I'm proud to say it. Right. But I'm like, I'm not done yet. My journey is this now starting. So all of a sudden I saw this advertisement about two guys from Kentucky that sold $30 million in a matter of on Amazon FBA. I was like, Hey, I know what FBA is. I've already been studying it. Fulfillment by Amazon. What is that? I was like, now you have my attention. I live in Kentucky. I know the areas they both grew up from. Let's just watch this introductory video. Next thing you know, I was hooked. Then they had this upcoming training. I signed up for the training. They had a small VIP access. I said, I'm your Huckleberry. Hey, sign me up. It's a very nominal amount. I want to get to know these guys, right? And then took the training about a year ago, actually, last February. Yep. And having been a corporate trainer myself, a field sales trainer, these multi-billion dollar companies again i'm not i'm very humble i very i don't know everything but judging the course and taking that course every day the leading with value how they were doing being personable right these are real people threw away all the corporate pc stuff right it's out there no it, it's appropriate but it was appropriate for their audience right and I just was like, I was tuned in. I was like leaning in like I hear I am on a camera. <laughs> and it, it smacked me up across the face. And there I, there I am. I'm like, I bought in. And I, I've been fast forward ever since. Wow. That's that's crazy. And, and we were talking a little behind the scenes, William. You know, yeah. one of the biggest mistakes that people make in business, I don't care if it's wholesale, private label, whatever it is you decide to do, you do have to eventually jump off the fence and go in with a mentor, with a coach, or just figure it out on your own, but you have to dive in and, and you took action. So what was it about wholesale? Explain to the, to the viewers who are watching, William, what is wholesale? How does it work? Because we all have this idea of what wholesale is, but maybe share how you're doing it and, and why after you started going through some of you know, Dan and Dylan's free training. And, and speaking of that, I'll put some free training down below for you guys. So you can go through, um, I'll put some blog posts. I'll put a link to a webinar coming up so you guys can go through what William went through, but what was it that attracted you to this? Well, it was interesting. I, I came from a very small town in uh, Southern Ohio. My parents owned a, uh, they started a little computer business and it was a wholesale computer business. Right. And they dealt directly with the brands. Right. And that was, you know, 15 years, 20 years before, you know, the wholesale formula. And what so what wholesale is, is you're cutting out the middleman, the distributor, right? And you're dealing directly with brand owners. So that A is a plus because you're able to increase your margin, right? And two, you're able to build a direct relationship with the brand. So the thing is about anything business is trust and transparency, which lacks in a lot of industries. It's important for you to build, right? So trust is the hardest to gain and the easiest to lose if we just want to be honest with ourselves. And I'm in the trust business. So I'm like, okay. Uh, so wholesaling in a sense is that you're able to sell products directly from a brand at a larger scale in, in quantities versus say on RA and OA, right? Sometimes you're, you're running around like a headless chicken. Say, hate to use that phrase. I think it's disgusting, but you're, you're eating up all this gas money, hoping that the thrift stores are there. And there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever because you're taking action. What wholesale attracted me is like, I'm used to hitting planes and trains and automobiles every week, six flights a week, traveling across the United States. And I started asking myself, well, what would it be like to be able to work from home, take the chaos out of everything and bring clarity and calmness to the whole relationship building process? That's what wholesale is to me. Right. And I'm in it for the long term and not the short haul. This is not a get rich quick, quick scheme. Wholesaling, again, to me, is about that business dealing directly with folks for the long term. And, and I hope that helped explain that there, Steve. Yeah, it definitely does. And, you know, just to clarify, there's different ways that people wholesale. I have friends of mine, yeah. William, who they work directly with distributors. And uh, yeah. a lot of times with those items, um, how do I say it? It's kind of like they're, I hate to say it like this. It's kind of like hit it and quit it. Like they're in and they're out. Like they're making their money. And then next thing you know, like there's a million people selling it. Similar to, to OA, opportunities. You're in, you're out. Sometimes the price drops. There's no map pricing. There's no like standards of the listing. It's just you're in and you're out. Whereas with what William's doing and what they teach in TWF is you work directly with the brand. You're building the relationship. And now that'll bring up the question. Most people always ask William, well, why wouldn't the brands 
just sell it on Amazon. It's so easy to sell on Amazon. It is for what a lot of us thrifters and resellers do. But when you're actually running a brand, you own a company, talk a little bit about that because people just don't understand how you could do $24,000 in a month of wholesale when a company yeah. or a couple suppliers could just do it on their own. Having spoken to hundreds of brands uh, for Amazon specific is most don't know what they don't know. The ecosystem within Amazon is very complex in the back end and just point, putting up a yes, many of them are successful to a certain point. So there's a there's a ceiling to their capabilities, whereas we who, anyone who takes a TWF course is more of an expert than most brands will ever be. What I mean by that is most brands think, hey. Uh, they're so in love with their product. They think everyone's going to automatically know to go into that search field and click it in and people's going to find it. That's just not the case, right? Having one picture on a listing is not going to help sell your product, right? I mean, in fact, at Amazon, I know for a fact, because I did my own test studies, I walked around the Walmarts of the world, the Targets, and went to a mall, which to me is a big deal. Any of my friends and family knows for me to walk into the mall, <laughs> I thought my line, right? And people were going to their phones and I saw them on Amazon price shopping, right? Or price checking. And so I started asking myself, what value are these listings providing customers? And then I paused myself and then all of a sudden hit and said, hey, you love putting pieces of the puzzle together, be part of that solution. And that's all we're trying to do is be that solution for the brands that don't know how to best sell on e-commerce. The brick and mortar methodologies don't work. And translate well online. I don't care if it's Amazon, Walmart, eBay, Shopify, wherever you're at. It's two different types of set. And every e-commerce marketplace has its own little nuances. So they don't know what they don't know. And what I also found is that sometimes it's important to kind of put their ego in check. Put they, put your ego in check, you know. Um, you know, just being able to provide value up front, sh just share with them through a conversation. You know, they're not going to bite your head off. They might hang up on you, but dial someone else you know it, it's just you know you got to be in the business to help people mm. and if you're not in the business to help people in the long term then get out please you know and that's what i think a lot of the majority of people is going to end up doing anyway they filter themselves out real quick so I'm, I'm curious william you know for folks who are starting anything it could be yeah. you know selling books from libraries or whatever i mean that first shipment making that first sale is the biggest it's the biggest thing I've noticed, right? I would have to be an idiot. I hate to say it, to not notice certain patterns after posting 2,500 videos on my channel and working with thousands of people. Like yeah. the people who succeed, they're not necessarily the smartest, the brightest. They didn't necessarily come from the right. best backgrounds, get the best right. grades, but they gave themselves a chance to succeed, William, by just getting a taste of what it's like. But sometimes getting a taste is more challenging than it seems because you have to figure out how to how to get that success. You got to put the ingredients together in the right sequence. And, and what was your, you know, that first taste of success with wholesale? What was that first deal you put together? And you know, I, I'm not asking you to give away exactly what you're selling, yeah. right, but I'm, I'm, if you can just kind of <laughs> see what the experience was like, you know, with your social security number included at all. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Steve, I'll be, let me say this, that uh, let's, I'll, I'll give you one example of a brand, right? So we after negotiating for about two months. Okay. I understand it's about five conversations, but brand owners are busy. There, there are very few people holding a lot of hats. So let's just put yourself in their shoes. It's not always about you. It's try to understand where their perspectives are coming from. Right. And so I negotiate with the brand and after about two months, we come to terms saying, Hey, you know, what's most important to you? How can we best work together? You know, and I was providing value, follow up value after every conversation going, hey, have you thought about this? Well, here's what I'm seeing your competition doing. If when I don't use the word if when we work together, how about let's tackle this first? You know, laying out the plan. Right. But that first taste was I sent in my first test order, 60 units of one product. I was only going to carry two of five products. Right. Because of the price list, it's all about knowing your numbers. Count the costs first, work backwards from the retail list that you sell it on, and then know your margins, right? So it's important to know that. It's a whole other conversation. But I sent my test order in, 60 units on one, 18 on another, and Amazon lost them both. 
no. That's my introduction to Amazon. <laughs> now, luckily, we have favorable terms with the brand owner, but it's hard when you're new and you know Amazon, you send this stuff in and Amazon fails you. Now, understand, too, this is getting close to Q. This is around August, early August. Yeah. And Uncle COVID is just smacking people upside the head with carrier uh, delays in carriers or the workforce in f- even the brand owners or people within the brand getting COVID. So you have to think it's like, OK, understand that perspective, but be resilient, be open, be honest and adapt and overcome. So we sent in another order. Next thing you know, it's like, OK, it took us seven days after we were live on the listing. We got our first sale, one hundred and eighty three dollars, something like that. I was like. Okay, this is real. This is real. Everything was received. Everyone's saying it's going to take two months to get things received. It was received in a week. I was like, oh, thanks for losing my first order, but you received this in a week. Thank you. And then we're off to the races in September hit $5,500. October, you know, I got it written down $13,000. Uh, November, I'm sorry, that was November. October, $10,000. In uh, November, $13,000. December, $17,000. January, t- almost twenty four. So I'm sitting there going, Okay, proof of concept. This stuff works. Just rinse and repeat, as Dylan Frost says. You know, hey, just rinse and repeat. And I'm like, well, if it's not broke, don't try to fix it, right? But we optimized the listings throughout that whole deal. So that tasted a little bit of success was this. It's proof positive when you have three letters in your head. Can. And it's proof positive when you have three other letters in your web, in your head. Will. Can and will. Just follow the program. You got to get your feet wet. Believe if your mind can conceive it, you can believe it. And if you believe it, you can achieve it. And that is just the follow the form. That's why they call it a formula, the wholesale formula. So get in, get wet, and let's roll. I'm, I'm curious, uh, William, a couple questions, and hopefully you don't mind me bombarding you because I just I love talking yeah. to people who are having success, especially people like you who like we could all relate to because you've only been doing this for a year. And you're coming off of, you know, the pandemic and all the craziness, like you're making it happen now. If you could do it, anyone could do it. Um, What are the typical profit margins with wholesale? I'll start with that uh, and maybe Mm -hmm. from your experience. And then I was going to ask you with that first brand, you put the deal together. Were there a lot of sellers on it? Were you sharing the buy box? So I know that's a double whammy. (laughs) No, no, no. Hit me with it. I love it. Uh, One of their listings had 17 sellers. One of the first questions I asked them, it was a struggling brand. I said, what value are those sellers providing you? And then I shut up. So I use five keys here. It's you show up, smile, ask questions, shut up and follow up. So I showed up by calling. You know what I mean? I smiled, you know, smile behind the people understand whether you you really enjoy what you're doing or you you don't. Right. And then I started asking questions. So, well, what value are these 17 sellers, you know, providing you? Well, they advertise. Okay. So your title is 50 characters long out, 200. What if you could really maximize that out to where people can actually find your product? What do you mean? People know my product. Yeah, but the BSR rank is like 939,000. That means it's deep in the catalog. You're actually being penalized by all the advertising they're doing, but you have like 0.25 conversion rates, right? So technically you could be 40 X in your product if you just opt them when you optimize your stuff. So it's kind of like and you implant that seed in their head going, well, what are they doing about you? I was like, well, and then I just waited for them to ask that question. Well, what are they doing? I think they're just hanging on to the coattails of each other, hoping that they're going to get a little piece of the pie. The question is, how are they best representing you? You know, and that's that's the whole key there is like, you know, you're asking questions that makes them stop and think because they're used to just running around like in their business. Right. And if you can just make a smart question, ask a smart question and then shut up, let them talk. And then they start second guessing themselves. Well, maybe it's not a reward system to let everybody on, on this listing. Right. Maybe I should work with people who want to truly provide value. Forgot the other part of your question. I apologize. Uh, the, the typical profit margins, but that was a great response. About 18%. About 18%. So, for example, you know, uh, a bad. lot of people say hey, 8% is good. I look at kind of like a stock market, you know, like every product that is sold on average. I'm talking about your aggregated average of now, you know, of all the products we have, about 18%. 
I'm like, okay, and I just reinvest the profits into either another project uh, or hiring a team member or doing something better of value, right? I mean, just rinse and repeat. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, that's great. With So with the 24,000 in sales that you've done approximately now, cool. is that with just one brand and a couple products? Are you still only working with one brand and a couple products? I'm, I'm giving you an example of one brand. Uh, we did a lot of consulting on the side too. It's not just a matter of being a third party seller. It's coaching businesses as to how they can better represent themselves or be discovered online. So we do, you know, good bit of that. And then also uh, brand management too. So I'm doing some brand management. Yeah. Uh, we won't dive too deep into that now, but just know for everybody who's watching, there's some huge opportunities. If you get into wholesale, you can make a lot of money as well. Not yeah. even selling the products wholesale, but just being a manager of the whole process and facilitating a good experience. It's its crazy. Kind of like when people start, you know, I don't know, going to garage sales. They don't understand that that's a stepping stone to thrift stores and then a stepping stone to online arbitrage. There is so many stepping stones once you get into yeah. wholesale, um, which is really exciting. So um, back to the story with the person with the 17, uh, with the brand, with the 17 yeah. sellers, yeah. did they end up eliminating any of their sellers? Did you end up working out some type of exclusive deal or are you Great still- question. The that? answer is yes. We eliminated all but four, three or four. Really? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, one of the listings maybe had 25 on another and then there were like three or four on a couple more. But I asked the question is how well do you know them? And I forced the actual brand owner to go on Amazon through a, a, a true, like a Zoom call. You can do that. Or I would send them Loom videos of proof. I'm like, do you actually know these people? And I researched all these companies, even their phone numbers, addresses. And he's like, I have no idea. How are they getting these tools? I'm like, let's call and ask. So next thing you know, the brand owner's taking ownership and started just taking the value up, provided him up front, right? setting myself apart. And he's just like, Hey, my name is section Y Z. I, I see you're selling the product on our listing. How are you getting our product? Kind of find out a lot of them were buying them from li either liquidators or we had one seller get this, that cut a deal with like a distributor without them knowing. Ew. Yeah. You, you're, you're going where you see where I'm going there. Right. Yeah. A lot so of funny stuff going on and that could affect yeah. the brand. You might be wondering, well, why does the brand care? Because you don't know what these third party sellers are doing when there's a return or a bad experience on Amazon from a third party seller. It looks bad on Amazon. When there's a bad experience with a specific product that looks bad on the brand. Well, also this, this brand through our market research had a, there was a lot of counterfeiting on one brand that we're working with. Okay. And we identified over 160 counterfeit listings. Uh, we know that the, the, the brand owner had a patent and trademark off uh, tra trademark in each brand that they did. They spent over nine thousand dollars just on the patent. And I was like, well, what are you doing to protect it? And as a seller, I helped identify those counterfeit listings. And then he said, you know, after about three months, he goes, how about I would agree for you to manage this in the background as long as you let me know everything you're doing, because I was always providing him videos of everything that we're doing, transparency, right? To build that trust. Yeah, no problem. Let's do that. So we shut down 160 counterfeiters in one day, and now we're up to 250. So, you know, bad actors tend to go on other marketplaces. So we went on to Walmart and eBay and shut them down too. And we're just diligent about it. And, you know, the whole thing is how can you become indispensable with your brand? It's going deep, but why? Are you in it for the first place? You know, you're in it to win it, right? So act like it. Well, speaking of the question why, I, I'm curious. I, I, I think I know the answer, but I'm curious. Uh, people are going to be curious about this. Why would you be spending so much of your valuable time? Um, and don't take this wrong, mate, but why would you spend so much time helping this brand, taking counterfeiters off, improving the listings? Why yeah. is, why, like, why is it so important for you? Um, is it because in, in this, I guess I'll just cut to the chase because I'm being kind of confusing. The point okay. I'm trying to say is I feel like you're spending all this time because obviously you want to create that relationship with a brand because a brand could come out with more products. They could yeah. grow their business. Like imagine you're making 18% off of all their sales. Maybe they're only a million dollar company now. What if they get to a 10 or a $20 million company? I guess the point I'm trying to say is you can make a lot of money with just one brand, one wholesale deal. Am I, am oh. I kind of touching the? Totally. 
totally. So, you know, and it's about finding that right mix, right? Uh, for example, I'm very meticulous, come from the corporate America world. I've also owned some other businesses in the past and, you know, I had to shut them down, you know, and things like that. You know, we talked offline, but I'm sitting there going, okay, who's who I want to really work with? Well, this, one of the brand owners we worked with actually helps fund whatever profits they make. They, they actually fund some trips to go volunteer to go help other people, empower people to treat, uh, teach them a trade or to help, you know, feed and clothe people. I'm like, okay, I may not be that person, but maybe I can help fund, be a part of that catalyst that, that spoke on the wheel to support that, that mission that they're doing in a sense going, you know, just doing great things for people. I'm like, okay, I believe in what they're doing. That's great. But two, when they provide you a creative license to go hunt, to do something like that, you're building your confidence, your competencies, number one, and you're also building your confidence. So you're also building your case studies for, for future conversations of other brands, right? What if you identify another brand that has the same issue? Now you can speak more definitively and more authoritatively or, or with authority, right? I mean, just with, with, with humbleness to where you can be of value to them from day one. So that what that does is shorten your sales cycle down too, real quick. So you got to learn to slow down in order to speed up. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of opportunities with wholesale. I have friends of mine who they just have one wholesale uh, deal with a brand, one product. They're making $2,000 a month. I know Dan and Dylan, um, I won't give specifics because I didn't yeah. get permission, but they did deals, man, that just with one deal, man, they make more than what some people make in a whole year. Yeah. I mean, oh, you got to think about that. that one. <laughs> the world is your oyster. You just have to believe it in a sense that you just got to work towards it. There's no substitute for work. We work very hard, but we work smart with the systems that we put in place and the processes. Because what that does is when the reason is I, you know, when I, I uh, hired my first uh, virtual system, which I don't call her a virtual system. She's my executive administrator. Hired her in July or June. But what I want to do is make sure those systems and processes as a leader, I want to make sure those systems and processes are in order and place to where I had a certain level of competency to where I can best lead and train and then relieve those those responsibilities on myself. Because I knew I couldn't build and scale on my own. And then I built a network of, my, of team members, whether it be a CPA, an attorney, people that actually understands e-commerce, which is rare. I mean, you got to go do your due diligence, right? And the TWF uh, community really helped me identify those said people. And then next thing you know, you have a support structure on there. I call it T-E-S-S. -E you know, you get your team yeah. together. You got to do your training. You got to execute and you got to have a nice support system. So, I mean, TWF provides all that. How much time would you say that it takes um, to get involved with wholesale? Let's just say maybe somebody's working right now. Maybe they're full-time stay-at-home mom, dad, whatever, and they don't have 40, 50 hours a week. They Maybe they only have 10, 15, 20 hours yeah. a week to put into this um, side hustle, if you want to call it that, um, until you yeah. start taking it more serious. Is that possible with wholesale, William? 100%. 100%. It's just about finding the right opportunity. I would suggest starting small. Just understand, you know, don't despise small beginnings and stuff because that's where you just, you know, you, you build your confidence and competencies, like I said. But the answer is absolutely yes. Just make the most of those 10 or 15 hours, right? Put a schedule down and commit. It's all, all it takes is commitment because those hours compound. Understand something. I'm a hundreds of hours in, if not thousands, me and our team. And then understand that when you get your team together, right? It's not just your experience. It's theirs too. So that compounds, right? It helps balance that out. And the tide rises with everyone, as it's been so eloquently said, it's like, hey, just take advantage of it. Take action now because don't be 80 years old wishing, you know, wishing your life saying, I wish I'd have done this when I had the opportunity. You know, the best time is now. It's just what you and if you spell now backwards, it's the word one. You have won. If you if you start now, you have won that mental game. See, and you can absolutely do it just you know, don't despise those small beginnings. Say, okay, this is what I want to do. I'm going to dedicate this one or two hours a day. You know, I have friends that have four kids too, and they have a demanding corporate job, but everyone has the greatest gift in life, Steve. They're given 24 hours in a day. When I first got into my, my prior corporate world, I was going on four hours sleep a night. Now, 
I'm a guy that requires a lot of sleep. I love sleep, right? <laughs> I mean, I got to have my sleep. But it's proof positive that, hey, when you have a true commitment, a will to win, I'm going to do this. I'm going to figure this out. You don't know, I mean, where it's going to lead you. This may be your next stepping stone. You know, you can still do RA and OA. That's fine. Keep yep. doing it. You're a hustler. Now you're just diversifying your business to where you can scale and grow a little more. Nothing says you have to stop one thing and do another, but invest that time, but invest it wisely. Write a schedule down, know your why, okay? And only focus on what's imp most important now. That one thing, and just mark it off when you accomplish it. I have a running notebook. I have about eight journals, okay? They're real, they're real like big. You know, I keep journals. My goal is to maximize them out and say, okay, what is it I've learned? What mistakes am I making? Oh, wait. I just saw a couple of YouTube videos that you did and people saying, hey, the key to success is make a lot of mistakes, but learn from them. Don't repeat them, right? Okay, there's a key. I'm, I'm making mistakes as I go along, but it doesn't mean I'm a failure. Just fail forward, right? Take those notes and say, okay. And then just recently this week, we ran into a situation because Amazon's a total beast. I, I got to deviate real quick. Say we ran into the situation, but it became familiar because we went through it. We got through it. We had an SOP for it. I'm like, ah, we know what to do now. Now it's not a problem. Now it's a solution for that brand, right? So I hope that helps out. Yeah, man, that's, that's valuable. And like you were saying before, you know, don't quit OA, don't quit thrifting. And I would suggest, especially if you don't have at least three to 5,000, five to 10,000, even sure. better. Um, I wouldn't get into wholesale because wholesale, you know, yeah, you can get in for a thousand or two, but you're going to have to have cash flow coming in and you're going to be buying new products and, and so on and so forth. So I would say for anyone right now watching, build up your bankroll, right? Build up your, uh, your bank account. So you could start investing in the wholesale. Um, I always say around three to 5,000 to start, um, more, the better. What, what are your thoughts? You know, I come, I, I'm old school, right? I'm all about CYA because orange is not the new black with me. You know, I'm too pretty for prisons. What I tell people I'm just joking. Right. But I, you know, I established an LLC right out the back. Right. You know, I got my team. I took some months to get the team right because I'm like, Hey, listen, Begin with the end in mind. Dr. Stephen Covey said that in the seven habits of how we affect the people. Shout out to that because it's kind of like begin with the end in mind. Where do I want to be? You're right. Three to five thousand. I get that. I invest a little more. Not going to lie uh, because I want to protect me and, you know, my assets. And uh, but also too, the way Amazon works is you need to have your LLC or whatever it is, S core, C core established versus sole proprietorship because there's some legal requirements that Amazon's going to require you to have, you know, addresses, uh, insurance. So, you know, do your due diligence. But the great thing again, though, TWF doesn't tell you they, they lead you to water, but they don't force you to drink, right? They provide those resources or ideas like, hey, consider this. If they were to start all over again, they would have done this a little faster. So that's wisdom, right? Write that down, study it and say, okay, that's what I mean by Learn to slow down a little bit so you can speed up later. Because once you get your structure right, then boom, there you go. Roll with it. Where do where do you see the future of wholesale going in the next three to five years? Uh, you know, there's certainly businesses where maybe they could be on the decline. They're not as popular, um, you know, but with the Internet and all these things going on with e-commerce and I would say, you know, with COVID and the pandemic and everything, it's really sped up online sales. People are shopping more and more online. Uh, mm -hmm. Is wholesale, uh, you know, kind of on the cutting edge of e-commerce or is it something that you think is going to become more difficult, more challenging? Would you say private labels better thrifting? What are your thoughts? You know, it's interesting. I had to go back 20 some years ago. I used to work for a distributor, right? And when I first got my first job out of college and so forth, and I was with the distributor for a couple of years is, is phone sales, but I'd pick, pack and ship the stuff, right? So I got to ask you the question is how much time are you spending an OA and RA picking, packing and shipping your stuff out, right? I was like, there's nothing wrong with that, but your time is valuable. Understand your time value of money too. I mean, your money's worth more today than it probably will be. There's this thing called inflation that's happening, right? And then you look at these wholesalers, I'm like, it is at the cutting edge. Because understand something, I have I've spoken with a ton of brands that 
You know, they work with distributors, but the distributors don't know Amazon either. The distributors may have got the listing up on Amazon, but they don't know how to market it well. Right. So that's a way for you to set yourself apart. Now, you don't have to know everything. There are industries out there that are aligned to help you, whether it be a listing optimization, inventory, you know, stocking levels. If you don't know it, trust me, you can go get it so you can grow it. Right. But you don't have to know everything. Again, wholesale is at the cutting edge because, listen, you have that relationship established with the brand. The brand is going to remember those individuals and or companies that helped them go from here to here. You need to be a part of their team and their family, right? You've heard this old adage, together everyone achieves more, right? So guess what? I know for a fact that I just had a, a brand call on Friday, last, last Friday. I said, how are we doing? We check in. How are we doing? As a wholesaler, right? Oh, you guys are great. I've never had this before. You need to tell me of all the sellers that you've had sell, represent your product. You've never had this level of transparency or I, I would give them sales analytics and competition. What's the competition doing, right? What keywords are working? Which one's not? What PPC advertising is working? Which one's not? No, no one's ever shared that with me. Well, the wholesale methodology, if you so choose to employ it, you make it what you want, right? But it's going to be that transparency that's lacking in the industry, that's going to last with wholesale, right? And then when I'm ready to palletize these next orders, who do you think is going to be first in line when they got four sellers, right? Yes, I think wholesale is going to lead to exclusives. I believe I, I'm pretty good at looking at patterns of how, you know, Walmart, Amazon, eBay, and Target, they're all kind of scaling up and going to with the litigious atmosphere that's out there. I believe that earning – an exclusive is where it's at. Well, I said earning. We don't make money. We earn it. I'm not a printing pet press, right? We earn it. So it's those people who earn it the best and, you know, and help those ex those brands excel the most are the ones that's going to last. So wholesale is here to stay. Dan and Dylan got it right. I'm here to tell you. And if you, if you don't know the wholesale formula, you need to check it out. They, they utilize the scarcity pretty well. They only offer training every once in a while. Get on their pre-list. And if you don't, you're doing yourself a major disservice. I mean, you got to pay to play, yeah. But the learning, the things I learned from them saved me thousands of dollars worth of mistakes. Saved me time and frustration and stress. You know, I got enough of this. Thank God I still have it. But, I mean, it's great. Proud to have it. But come on, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it, man. You're really inspiring in your story. I hope, you know, for anyone watching right now, you know, leave a comment, smash that like button. Let us know that you're enjoying this. Um, for folks who don't know what an exclusive means, that means you could be the only person selling that item. So let's say that, that, uh, that brand is selling 2000 units a month. You could be the one getting all those sales and getting that 10, 12, 18% margin on right. those sales. Like say they're bringing in $2 million a year. Say you help optimize their listing and get it from two to five and you're the only seller. I mean, this is what I people don't understand. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you know, and the brands don't understand it either. I hate to say that. I mean, they don't understand the impact that e-commerce can make until COVID hit. To me, COVID's a blessing because it's an eye opener. I mean, I get everything shipped to my door. You know, I mean, I'm looking at the safety factor, but it's convenience. Now, what a lot of people don't know is 25 years ago, this, this uh, methodology was trialed like, you know, online shipping and getting thing, things shipped to your house. The logistics just wasn't there. The bandwidth wasn't there and, and the capacity wasn't there. Now it is. I believe that Amazon's going to continue to grow. The wholesaling, the wholesale form is going to continue to grow. The, the bar none, the best training I've been through. I've been through a lot of training in my life. So if there's, if you take anything from that, take that to the bank. Because literally you'll be stacking cash in the bank if you follow what they do and actually take it and take action. Well, hopefully you guys take action. I'll put a link. We have uh, an upcoming webinar with uh, the wholesale formula coming up soon, where we're going to be sharing how to find suppliers, how to get started, really go through it all. My buddy Jason's going to be running the show over there. So it's going to be awesome. So you guys should check that out. I'll put some blog posts down below as well. And um, a free PDF that will help you to get started. But last question, William, where do you want to see yourself in a year, man? I want to have a conversation with, with you, William, in, in, in 2023, man, right? It's, it's, yeah. you know, I want to have a conversation with you, man. Where, where are you going to be over the next year or two? You know, I, I'm one of these guys that 
I know the ma major limiting factors myself, right? But I want to be a seven figure seller, period. I mean, why not? Whether it be third party seller, brand management or consultant, you know, the thing is, is that, hey, I can do it. I have a belief. But if I don't make it, I'm going to be a whole lot further along than what I am now, right? The main thing is, is making that forward progress. Understand everyone, your first couple of years in business, you're learning. You know, it's that, that third and fourth year that you should be exploding, right? So to me, it's kind of like, let's get through the going through times, right? Uncle COVID still wants to come and visit us, right? And I'm just like, okay, let's just see what we can do. Because I'm a firm believer that this, this methodology is here to stay. And uh, it's just going to make me better. You know, maybe it'll lead to something else too. Maybe I'll start RA and OA. Who knows, right? I got to diversify as a business. I can learn as much from you and your followers as anyone could from me, right? So that's the main thing is, hey, keep an open mind, check your ego at the door and just get going. Man, I love it. I love it. And uh, do you want to share with anybody where people could get a hold of you, your services? Maybe there's even brands that are watching who maybe need help yeah. with their listing optimizations or anything. Uh, feel free to share anything that you would like, man. I really appreciate it, Steve. So basically our website, the name of the company is Awesome Co. A-W-S-I-M-C-O. Uh, again, uh, you can go to awesomeco.com or hey, hit us up on where I'm posting I'm going to be like you. I'm posting on YouTube, uh, YouTube videos, Instagram, TikTok. You can find us there at Awesome Co. AWS IMCO uh, on YouTube. And I think it's like Awesome Co. LLC, but you can find us. I'm going to have, uh, we have a bunch of batch videos we're editing now. It's all about just setting ourselves apart and providing that maximum value, whether you are a brand or a seller. So to man, together, everyone achieves more. And I thank you out for that shout out. So, hey, smash those like buttons because raking profits where it's at as well. Hey man, I appreciate it. I know this video is going to help a lot of people, man. We, we definitely beat up this video like Muhammad Ali behind you. I see in the picture frame, man. And uh, hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, somebody gets some, some sort of, uh, some sort of education, inspiration, motivation yeah. to go out there and make it happen. And I think the moral of the story is, you know, go through some videos, go through the free training below, whatever, learn, read some blog posts, but get started and take action. And with that being said, William, thanks for sharing your story. And I appreciate you. Stay awesome, Steve. Thank you so much. Hey man, let's do this. I'll talk to you soon.